Welcome once again to Lato's Law. Here's Steve Lato. I know a lot of people in my audience have uh, run businesses. Uh, I currently run a business. My law practice is a business. Uh, I've run other businesses as well over my life. And, uh, you know, if you're going to start a business, there's a bunch of considerations you have. And so, for instance, do you have to register with anybody or, or uh, you know, that kind of thing? So if you become a corporation, you might have to, you know, file corporate papers. Uh, if you become uh, a DBA, you can often get DBA papers to indicate that you are legally operating that way. And so these things vary wildly from state to state, and even within a state, they can vary. But the question is, is what kind of regulations can they put in place to keep you uh, in line and regulate how you do your business? And so here's a fascinating story that I ran across from Pacific Legal. Pacific Legal, they do great work also. Victory for Ohio Family. Sixth Circuit rolls back certificate of need laws. So the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals encompasses Michigan, where I am, but also Ohio and Kentucky and a couple other states. And so the interesting thing here, Joshua Polk writes, the Sixth Circuit Court of Appeals just delivered a blow to economic protectionism in a case Pacific Legal has been litigating for years. So this man, who's at the center of the case, and his children run a medical transport company, a small non-emergency ambulance service in Aberdeen, Ohio. Now, that's not far from the Kentucky border. So Ohio and Kentucky share a border. The company is fully licensed in Ohio and transports patients to and from nursing homes, doctor's offices, and hospitals. But again, it's non-emergency ambulance service. So they get calls for service from Kentucky, which is not that far away. It's right there. They were barred from transporting Kentucky patients without a certificate of need, which Kentucky will not grant them, or at least they wouldn't before. And Kentucky's refusal was not about health or safety. It was about protectionism, that is, keeping out the competition. Certificate of need laws force new businesses to prove to state regulators that there's a need for their business before they can operate. What happened to the old, no, hang out a shingle and just see if you can make it? Oh, no, 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 no. You need to prove to us that there's actually a need for your business. But here's the tricky part. Existing businesses are allowed to weigh in and can veto your certificate of need application, which keeps you from coming into the marketplace. So let's suppose that you, I don't know, run an ambulance service. And you're running your ambulance service, and you're charging a lot of money, you're making great money doing it. And someone comes along and goes, I'd like to start an ambulance service too. Now, I might not like that because that's competition for me, but when you say, hey, Steve, you've got the right to take a vote and participate in a vote and keep them out of the state, what do you think? Oh, yes, I, I vote for that. Let's do that. So that's what's happening here. They applied for a certificate of need with the Kentucky Cabinet for Health and Family Services. And four Kentucky ambulance companies protested. So the competition protested, saying there was no need for another ambulance service to be operating in that area. Now, these people regularly receive calls from Kentucky patients, and they estimated that if they were allowed to take the calls and act on them, that they could gain 300 jobs per year. But I know you're going to say, but Steve, those other four Kentucky ambulance companies could get 75 each of those 300 if those people are forced to go there. So, see, that it makes sense. Not if you're trying to supply the cheapest services to consumers. You want competition. Competition tends to bring prices down. Lack of competition tends to drive prices up. Anytime I say things like that, I'm going to get somebody who's going, Steve, you don't know anything about economics. What I just said is absolutely true, though. It does tend to do that. When Pacific Legal Foundation first met the man at the story, that story struck a chord with the PLF staff, and so they even produced a short documentary about his fight to get his business over there. Kentucky's got a great need for ambulance services, he said. So the man's plain spoken, quick to smile, but also blunt. I'm not a rich man, but I don't consider myself a poor man either. I consider myself a working man. Nobody gave me nothing. I've never asked anyone for a handout. So all he wanted was the opportunity to run his business, to answer calls his company's already receiving. So people are already calling him saying, can we hire you? And when he finds out they're in Kentucky, he's got to say, I'm really sorry, but no, I can't. No, I can't. 
So with the help of the Pacific Legal Foundation, uh, they sued the Kentucky Cabinet for Health and Family Services in 2019. A district court ruled against them in 2020. But last week, in a victory for the man and his family, the Sixth Circuit ruled that Kentucky cannot use certificate of need requirements to restrict ambulance trips between Kentucky and other states just because a state agency determines new competition is undesirable. (laughs) I got news for you. Ask any business, do you want more competition? They're going to say, no, of course not. The Commerce Clause of the Constitution, trust me, it's in there somewhere, gives Congress the exclusive power to regulate interstate commerce. The Commerce Clause was designed to stop the economic protectionism that had spread among the states at the time of the founding of the country. By preventing legacy medical transport from transporting Kentucky patients to Ohio hospitals, state regulators violated the Commerce Clause. Unfortunately, the Sixth Circuit's decision does not overturn the law entirely. State regulators can continue to require a certificate for intrastate ambulance trips. That is, legacy medical transport still won't be able to transport Kentuckians from one location to another within Kentucky without securing that certificate of need. The Sixth Circuit acknowledged that the certificate of need law may well be folly, folly, F-O-L-L-Y, but for trips within Kentucky's borders, the costs of the law are costs that Kentucky's legislature has inflicted on its own people. So not so for interstate trips. Kentucky can't burden out-of-state businesses by restricting interstate commerce, the court held. So for the man here, the decision is a relief that opens up new possibilities for his growing business. When Pacific Legal Foundation interviewed him for the documentary, they asked him who should have the right to start a business. And he said, anybody that's got breath in them. And I agree with that. And so I've mentioned before, my specialty is lemon law. Uh, I am an attorney. And when people ask me more broadly, what do you consider yourself? I say, well, I'm a consumer protection attorney, consumer protection. It just so happens that Lemon Law is a very narrow section of consumer protection. And so I'm always aware of the things that affect consumers. And we're all, by the way, we're all consumers. We are all consumers. If you go out and buy anything today or sell anything, you know, you're involved in commerce. We're all consumers. And so as consumers, there are certain things that affect us. One of them is price. What does something cost us? And so quite often... Higher prices hurt consumers. We'd like prices to come down. You know, some prices fluctuate wildly. The price of gasoline, for instance. Real estate prices, maybe a little, but a little less so lately. I mean, they're going, you know, but they're leveling off and interest rates and all that. But my point simply is this, that this notion affects everyone. Right now, some people are probably thinking, glad I turned off that video five minutes ago. (laughs) Because they were wondering, why would anyone care about a dispute with an ambulance company on the border of Ohio and Kentucky? What's it got to do with me in Idaho? What's it got to do with me in Alaska? What's it got to do with me in New Zealand? What was it? Well, what it's got to do with you is this right here is a microcosm of the kinds of things that happen all over the place. And so there are places where you try to go into business and you find out that the people who are already there can do all kinds of stuff to keep you out. And so when they can do things to limit competition, it tends to hurt consumers, which is one of the reasons, for instance, the, you know, the Sherman Antitrust Act was passed a long, long time ago because legislators realized monopolies hurt consumers because they reduce choice and increase price. So here you have a situation where Kentucky's got this wacky law that says you want to operate here? You've got to apply and let us know what you're going to do. And we'll decide if there's actually a need for your services. And it's, it's bizarre. I, I, you know, I thought in America it was, I want, to, I want to start a business. I can start a business. And the marketplace will decide that. And that's the way it ought to be. But, you know, I don't live in Kentucky. I don't have a dog in this fight. I didn't vote for these legislators who passed this law. But the people of Kentucky might want to think about that and go, Really? Because business people love the law. Yeah, it keeps out competition and allows me to keep my profit margins higher. So there you go. Victory for Ohio family. The Sixth Circuit rolls back certificate of need laws. And Joshua Polk wrote that for the Pacific Legal Org. 
That's the website. Questions or comments, put them below. Let's talk to you later. Bye bye. Thank you for watching Leto's Law. Failure is the opportunity to begin again more intelligently.